Hey everyone, welcome to the other video of chapter 7 on the trace determinant plane. So in this video we're going to be drawing the trace determinant plane, filling in all the details as to what goes where, and making this whole picture um, look nice for encompassing all the data we've done so far about all of this different sort of equilibrium points we can have for stuff in chapter 7. So let's go ahead and just start drawing that out. So like I mentioned in the last video, the idea is this curve d equals t squared over 4 is going to be important because along that curve our discriminant is 0. So let's go ahead and draw some axes and put that curve on it. All right, let's just assume that is this curve. So the idea is I want to put all of my different um, types of equilibrium points on this picture based on where they would fall, based on where this being the trace, and this being the determinant of my matrix, how this determines things. So let's start with above the curve. So I'm going to be end up scrolling down to write things and then back up to put them on the picture just so we sort of so it works back and forth. So let's start with above the curve. So so if we're above the curve, then d is bigger than t squared over 4, which means t squared minus 4d is negative. Therefore, we have complex roots. And the real part is t over 2. So this means we're getting spirals. They are asymptotically stable if t is less than 0, because then we have a negative real part, which means things are coming in. They are unstable if t is bigger than 0, and I get stable centers if t equals 0. So from above the curve, I get complex roots, which means I get spirals. They're sta as well as stable for t less than 0, they're unstable for t bigger than 0, and they are stable centers for t equals 0. So let's go ahead and add those to our picture. So above the curve, so I'm going to draw equilibrium points for what we're looking at. So above the curve, if t is negative, I'm going to get stable, asymptotically stable spirals. So spirals going in. If I am bigger than 0, t is bigger than 0, I'm going to get spirals going out. So these are unstable, these are asymptotically stable. And at the center here, I'm going to get centers. So I just get ellipses here. OK, now let's look if d is negative, because that's another chunk of this graph. So if d is less than 0, then what happens? Then if I look at t squared minus 4d, this is bigger than t squared, which means that if I look at my roots, I get t plus or minus the square root of t squared minus 4d. If this is bigger than t squared, then I'm going to get opposite signs because I'm going to have that this thing here is going to split by more than t, which means one of them is going to be positive, one's going to be negative. You can also think about this as if I have d less than zero, then my polynomial r squared minus tr plus d has to have two roots of opposite sign because this number here is negative. So it has to be in has to become an r plus r1 and an r minus r2 to get a negative number here in the d spot. So in either case, when this happens, I'm getting real and distinct roots, but they are opposite signs. So opposite sign roots means these are my saddle points. And it doesn't matter what t is, positive, negative, anything, I'm still just getting saddle points. So let's go up and put those in the picture. So anywhere down here, I'm getting my saddle points. That goes for anywhere in this plane over here, I'm getting my saddle points. And now finally, what happens if d is positive, but I am below the curve? Well, in this case, I'm in the opposite case. I am in real and distinct roots again, but I will get that now t squared minus 4d is going to be strictly less than t squared, which means because it's strictly less, that means that my roots are going to be the same sign. Because again, if you look up in the above part up here, t squared minus 4d is less than t squared, then I can't cross over 0 when I add or subtract from t. So this means my roots are the same sign. So these are my nodes. They are asymptotically stable if t is negative, and they are unstable if t is positive, because that will dictate what sign both roots have. So let's go ahead and put this one in our picture as well. 
So T positive and below the curve means I get unstable nodes, and T negative below the curve means I get stable nodes. Obviously looking in the book for better pictures, the book will have computer generated ones which are definitely better than the ones I can draw. Anyway, so there is the full trace definite plane. Um, the other thing you notice is I left out the repeated eigenvalue case. Those only occur on the line here. And there's no way to determine what kind of point you're going to get just by tracing determinant. Because as we saw in the examples we had, even if we have the exact same formula for the polynomial of the matrix, it may or may not have a proper node or improper node. We have no idea of knowing until we actually try to solve the problem with the actual matrix. So the tracing determinant cannot tell us enough to tell us whether or not that's going to be a proper improper node. So that we have to solve the problem specifically for. But for the other stuff, for our nodes, our saddle points, and our spirals and centers, that we can determine just from the trace determinant plan on its own. So that's the idea of this. The idea of this is sort of like a nice way to sort of group everything together and analyze what kind of point you're going to get without actually taking apart the matrix. Now, if you end up needing to find a general solution at the end, you might as well go find the eigenvalues because you're going to need those anyway. But if you just need the overall behavior, you don't care about actually solving the system, this gives you a way to analyze that without actually having to solve the eigenvalues out as a, as, as a separate step. All right, that's it for this. That's it for, I guess, the videos before the second exam. So thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next one.